Hi, so in this video, I'm going to show you about position vectors. So position vector shows us the point of an object from a relative position. So if we think of this as these coordinates here, where P is 2, 5, Q is 4, 9, and R is negative 3, negative 5. And we can see these points on a grid. So point P would be at 2, 5. So this will be 2 across from the origin, and then 5 up. So this is the origin, which is our fixed point of reference. Now as a vector, we go from the origin to the point, and we're going in this direction, and we have 2 in the i direction, so 2i, and then 5 in the j direction, so 5j. And we can also write it in column vector form, so 2 and 5. So for point Q, 4, 9, we're going to go 4 in the i direction and 9 in the j direction. So we have a point 4, 9. And again, we're going from the origin and we're going in this direction. And the column vector will be 4, 9, or 4i plus 9j. So each of these are position vectors for points P and Q. So do you want to try and work out the position vector for point R? You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so for point R, we're going minus three in the X direction, and minus five in the Y direction, so it'll be about here. And we're going from the origin to R, so we can label the direction. In terms of i and j, it'd be minus 3i, minus 5j, or in column vector form, minus 3 and minus 5. Okay, so these are the position vectors for each point. So now we're going to work out the vector p to q. So this will be from p to q. So we can write this as the vector p to q will be equal to, we go from P to O, and then from O to Q. So P to O, followed by O to Q. But if we look at P to O, well, this is the same magnitude, but the opposite direction as O to P. So what we can say is that P to O is the same of minus O to P. So now we can write this out in a bit neater. We have O to Q minus O to P. Writing out in this way makes the calculation a little bit easier. So we have O to Q, which is 4, 9, minus O to P, which is 2, 5. So now we can work out the difference in the I direction. So 4 take away 2 is 2. Then in the j direction, 9 take away 5 is 4. So the column vector for p to q is 2, 4. Or we could write in i in j form as 2i plus 4j. Okay, so for the next one, vector r to q. So do you want to try and write this vector yourself? You can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. Okay, so for r to q, welcome back if you had a go. We're going to go from R to O, and then from O to Q. So we'll write this as a sum, R to O plus O to Q. Now, again, we know R to O as the same magnitude of the opposite direction as O to R. So we can write this as O to Q minus O to R. We know O to Q is 4, 9, and O to R is minus 3, minus 5. So we can add up the I direction, 4, take away with negative 3, it's 4, add 3, which is 7, and then 9, take away negative 5, is 14. Okay, so this is R to Q. We could also have written 7I plus 14J. Okay, so now we've been asked to show that all three points are called linear. 
So a collinear means that they lie along a straight line. So if we look at P to Q and R to Q, well, we can see we can write R to Q in the same direction as P to Q. We can factorize out V 3.5. So 7 over 2, lots of 2i plus 4j. They're exactly the same as what we have here. So what this tells us is, is that R to Q is a scalar multiple of P to Q. So they're traveling in the same direction, but R to Q is longer or 3.5 times longer. So we can write this as R to Q is a scalar multiple of P to Q, and therefore traveling in the same direction. Also, because both vectors pass through the same point, point Q, we know that they are collinear. So they lie along the same line. Okay, let's try the next question. Okay, so in this question, we've been told that vector O to P is 3i plus 4j, and O to Q is 5i minus 2j. And we've been asked to sketch the positions of P and Q. So if we go from the origin, we're going 3 in the i direction for P, and then 4 up. So this will be about here. So we're going from the origin to P in this direction. We'll label this P, and we'll give it the column vector 3 and 4. So for O to Q, we're going further in the i direction, but now we're going down by 2 in the j direction. So this will be about here. So we go from the origin to Q. We show the direction, and we can label it with a column vector. 5 and minus 2. Okay, so the vector P to Q goes from P to Q in this direction. So we'll label the arrow. And we can see that P to Q is P to O followed by O to Q. So we can write this as a sum. So P to Q is equal to P to O plus O to Q. And now again, we can write this as negative OP. So O to Q minus O to P. We know O to Q is 5 and minus 2. And O to P is 3 and 4. So the vector P to Q will be in the i direction, the 5 take away the 3. So 2. And in the j direction, negative 2 take away the 4, so minus 6. Or we could have written 2i minus 6j. OK, so for part C, now we want the magnitude of P to Q. So the magnitude would be the length from P to Q. And we can think of this as the hypotenuse. So we'll draw this vector out separately here. Well, if this is the hypotenuse, the i direction will give us this length, which is 2, and the j direction will give us the vertical, which is 6. So the hypotenuse will be the square root of 2 squared plus 6 squared. So the square root of 4 at 36, root 40. And we can simplify this to make 2 root 10. OK, so this is the magnitude of vector P to Q. All right, let's try one more question. Okay, so for question three, we've been told that O to A and O to B are position vectors, where O to A is 3i plus j, and O to B is i plus 4j. And we've been told that M is a point on OB, such that A to M is half of A to B. So M is situated half away along this line. And we've been asked to work out the vector O to M, which is this vector here. OK, so if you want to try this question yourself, you can pause the video, and when you come back, we'll go through the work solution. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show the vector O to M, but I'm going to show it as a path, which is from O to A and then from A to M. So we'll write this as a sum, O to M, is equal to O to A followed by A to M. And we know that O to A is given 
as 3i plus j. So we can write this in column vector form 3i and 1j. Now, a to n, we know is one half of a to b. So we'll show this separately. a to n is one half of a to b. So now we need to work out a to b. And a to b is a to o plus o to b. But we can write this as o to b minus o to a. Because if you remember, we're going in the opposite direction along from a to o as we are from o to a. So we can work out a to b. We have 1 and 4 minus o to a, which is 3 and 1. So a to b will be minus 2 and 3. We can now use a to b to work out a to m. And this is one half of minus two and three, which is minus one and 1.5. So now we can substitute this back into here. So plus a to m minus one and 1.5. So finally, we can add the i direction together, three at negative one, which is two and then 1 add 1.5 for j, and we get 2.5. So O to n will be 2i plus 2.5j. Okay, thank you for watching, and you can download the full lesson and worksheet from mrmathematics.com.